Welcome to the Courage Barbell Unlimited Podcast with your host, legendary powerlifter and strength athlete, Chad Ikes. For most, the journey of strength starts in the gym, but should inevitably expand through all aspects of life. Join us as we discuss all things strength. Now, here's your host, Chad Ikes. Okay, today, actually this morning, I had a thought, and I'm trying to work all these things in and work this podcast in where I can, when I have these these weird random thoughts, either remember to record them or do them immediately. And and today, I'm going to cover a thought that I just actually had while I was showering this morning. Of course, this takes time and I don't make any money off this podcast yet. So, you know, we're I'm trying to to figure out a schedule where I can do this a little more regular. And part of the reason I want to do that is I continue to say that I learned the most about strength training and even about life from just having random conversations with people. I mean, I learned way more about strength training just talking with other high athletes. Not even necessarily when it was about, hey, we're talking, it's a, it's not a seminar, nothing. We're just hanging out talking. And I learned a lot from my own thoughts that come into my head. Or, or if I talk to someone and, and they said something that I thought was interesting, <clears throat> it will keep rolling around in my head. And then I keep expanding on it and trying to process it and, and take it further and further and further. So I want to share those experiences and thoughts with you guys, hoping that I can instill in you to start thinking for yourself. Like, don't just go look for knowledge, learn intelligence, learn how to utilize that knowledge and spend some time on it, which is also another reason. Sorry. I actually, seriously, I just, I got out of the shower and said, I got to do this right now. Um, I did the quotes. I do the quotes just because I want to give you a quote and I, and it's a good way to practice thinking. It's a good way to practice your own thought, to take that one quote and spend the day thinking about it. And, and where can you take it? Can you take it deeper? Can you give it a deeper meaning? Could you find maybe a better way to say it? Could you find some new concepts in that saying? So while I was in the shower this morning, I got to thinking about motivation and discipline again. And I'm known for saying motivation is bullshit. Discipline is what gets you there. Because motivation is really more of a feeling. And discipline is just like an action. But being my own devil's advocate that I am, I was thinking and I thought, well, wait a minute. If I say I have discipline, why do I have discipline? I have discipline because I want a goal then couldn't I say that that goal is motivation? So even if you're disciplined, you have motivation to stay disciplined. So I just kind of started thinking, man, this is like, this is kind of semantics here. I'm just going around in circles. And and now I'm trying to take away, how can I cut through? I want to cut through the crap. Keep it simple, stupid. I want to come to the, the source i want to find what what is the main key to this and i've also always said i go motivation isn't bad if you if you have motivation use it that's great it's there it's a tool but don't rely on it so i think that's kind of still what i come back to and i started thinking about my lifting career and i I often say that i started lifting for sports to get stronger for sports which is true. That's why I went, hey, I need to start lifting because I'm not doing as well in sports. Actually, when I really started serious, I started a little bit before my freshman year when my brother was playing football and that kind of faded because he quit. And then when I didn't make first string my freshman year, that just pissed me off. And my only thing was bigger and stronger. 
<clears throat> so that's when I really got serious about lifting. But it wasn't it, my motivation wasn't necessarily to keep doing it for sports. It was more controlling my anger. When I would flip out and get completely pissed off, if I went downstairs and bench pressed till I squished myself or until I was completely and utterly exhausted, I would be laying on the floor with the biggest grin on my face, just like, oh, man, like everything, like the whole world just let off me and there's no weight on me at all. Like I'm just content. And I think that was uh, until the beginning of powerlifting, that was my motivation. It was to deal with my anger, to deal with my frustrations. And even <clears throat> when I had to stop throwing in college because of my compartment syndrome, you know, it was, I kept lifting. I had to keep lifting. That was my daily life at work. I'd be getting pissed off and frustrated. And it's like, you know, I can't wait to get to the gym. Can't wait to get to the gym. Can't wait to get to the gym. And that was how I dealt with everything was going to the gym every day. And of course I've told the story many times when I, when I started powerlifting, I kept we kept running into overtraining because we were just training too much and too hard. And eventually Dave Tate's like, do you want to be the best in the world or do you want to use the gym to deal with your other issues? And that was when I kind of started a long process of changing why I lifted. So start lifting because of sports. That's kind of motivation. Uh, then you keep lifting to deal with your anger issues. Well, that's kind of motivation. And then you change and go, okay, I can't deal with this because of my, I got to get my emotions out of it. But why am I doing that? Because I want to be one of the best power lifters in the world. So that's kind of my motivation. So, you know, and I've had, and then I've, you know, I lifted for a long time. I would draw past energy from past experiences, uh, I kind of learned this when I was playing football and one, me and my brother have a, a rocky past and we were in a bad spell one time and I saw him going towards when we were driving to go to one of our, my games. And I was just like, just this feeling of rage. And I went, Oh, I got to hold on to this. And I played a great game and that I kind of learned that. Yeah. Emotions are a good thing. Like if I can use them, if I can control them, then it's a good thing. And that's one of the reasons I have a huge Hulk tattooed on my side is to remind me that all these feelings and emotions are not bad. Can you control them? Can you be calm when you need to be calm? And can you be enraged when you need to be enraged? So we go through that. And then I carried that even when I knew it was like, okay, I, I can't lift on a daily basis to control my anger. But I can still use that anger if I can learn how to turn it on and off. And so when you see me in a lot of my back in the day in my competitions, I used those emotions and I went completely crazy and I put myself in a place where it was life or death. And it was my platform, my weights, my field. Like I was king and I was going to win no matter what. And like, it really was that serious to me. And of course, I, I I always I tell people people a lot of people try to mimic me and they approach the bar and try to lift with this rage. There's a point where you got to pull it back and focus, um, which for me was like right when I get under the bar. So even that has to be controlled. But I wanted to have my adrenaline and everything as high as possible by the time I got under that bar. And then you move on and as you, as you get better and better and you can't quite lift as much because your body can't recover from what you've taught your body to do, it takes longer to recover from that. You kind of get to a point where you're actually going to do better training with a little happier emotion and a feeling better of emotion, which if you listen to I think it was the second podcast with J.M. Blakely. We really, we talked a lot about that and he made some great, amazing points. <clears throat> Such as just think when you first meet a, a chick that you really, really like and how happy you are and how everything else in your life seems to go just awesome during that time. Whoa, why not make that all the time in the gym for you and train, train happy. 
And still, I still, if I'm, if it's a big day and I need to get pumped up and I want full adrenaline, I can do that, you know, but again, I pull that back right when I go under the bar to focus on what I need to do, <clears throat> which is a skill. Then, so now, now that I don't compete much, I train when I want to train. I train when I feel good and when I'm happy and I, and I find I'm, I can still make great progress without actually killing myself. And I think a lot of that has to do with the attitude. And if, and if you can, and then you start, if you, if you can look outside the gym at, at the whole spectrum of things, the less stress you have outside the gym, the better your body's going to function, the better you're going to recover, the quicker you can get back in the gym and train again. So if you can carry those more positive emotions and be in a more positive state throughout the day, it's actually going to help your training. Even when you're in the gym, when you're out of the gym. <clears throat> and then let's bring this all back to the motivation of having that motivation or having that discipline is going to help you keep that positive attitude throughout the day where If your motivation fades, if you, if you get good sleep and you feel good and your energy's high, it's easy to be motivated when you start getting beat up and you're dealing with injuries and your sleep's falling off and your energy levels are dropping. It's hard to be in a good mood, which makes it hard to be motivated. And that's where I think a lot of people, including myself, will go like, well, I need discipline. I need to know what I need to do and I need to do it no matter what. But that can be its own enemy as well, because a lot of people are like discipline, discipline, staying on my course, discipline, staying on my program, even when the best thing they could do is back off their program for that day or to go, hey, I know it's not in my program, but I need a deload week. That's that takes serious discipline to be able to to adjust to those things. So even discipline can be. an interesting word to to look into and to see because it can it can be flipped in the wrong direction too and this then again we're talking about balance what's the right amount of discipline cuz discipline can be it can it can go too much everything can go too much or it can be not enough so then so then as i'm thinking about all this and running all this through my head i st- i keep coming back to you okay well what's the answer then what's the root And I think we need it all. Like you need to have, it's kind of like when I do goals. I don't think you can pick one goal. Because if you pick your big grand goal, it kind of gets depressing sometimes when you're not making much progress towards it. But if you just pick all these little goals, then you never see your grand goal. And that can be hard to keep going too. So I set multiple goals in at least three different ranges. What's my big, crazy, unbelievable goal? What's my serious, realistic goal? What's my like yearly goal? And then what are my monthly goals? That's actually four. See that? I counted to four. Uh, Meathead. And I think of the same thing with people like, well, I don't have the motivation that they have. Well, do you have the discipline that they have? And everyone has motivation. Everyone has discipline. It's just, will you train it and will you build it? And will you utilize what you can use at the time? You know, throughout my career, there's times where it's hard to get to the gym. I don't care what anybody says. I have days where it's hard to get to the gym. Most of the time I love it and I love training. And my biggest problem was, was, the hardest thing I ever did was backing off and not training as much. But even right now in my life, I'm like, man, I should probably train today. And I'm like, God, oh, God, but I don't, man, I'd really go ride my bike or something, but I go do it. I make myself do it because I remember, well, what, what are you going for? Is this, is this necessary to reach your goal? Then you need to do it. So as I'm sitting here talking, I'm trying, I'm trying to wrap this up in a, in a nice little bow that makes sense.
And I think that I think the best thing is to, to have a goal. Get your goal, get it set. Then can't do you believe you can achieve that goal? If you don't believe you can achieve it, then you need to do some work right there on helping yourself believe that you can achieve it. And we as humans can achieve just about anything if we really want to. And if it is a goal that you can't find a way to believe that you can do it, then you need to adjust your goal. Because maybe you're like, well, man, I don't really know if I can be one of the best powerlifters in the world. Or maybe you're like, man, I don't know if I could lose 50 pounds. I'd really like to lose 50 pounds, but I don't know if I can. So then maybe just maybe just back your goal down for now. You can always add more goals later. You can always expand your goals later. But start with a goal that you believe. You're like, I don't know if I can lose 50, but you know what? I know I can lose 20 pounds. Okay, well, then make that your goal. Your goal is to lose 20 pounds. And then set your corresponding smaller goals down to uh, time frames where you can look at it and go, hey, I actually, I lost two pounds, man. That's that's on track to my 20 pounds. That's perfect. That's awesome. And you believe that you can do it. Now, if you want discipline and motivation, Either or, because I think, again, it's going to be like energy and waves. Some days you're going to need the discipline. Some days you're going to need the motivation. When honestly, both of those are still kind of motivation, but it's a different way. Like, are you just, I'm just motivated to go train for some weird reason, or I'm motivated to train because I want to hit my goal, which most people would call discipline. And to be honest with you, I should probably, I should probably define both of these words and look them up. So actually, let's do that really quick because I have my phone here. So discipline. The personal following. Oh, this is like a religious thing. here. A follower or student of a teacher, leader, or philosopher. Oh, that's disciple. Sorry, guys. I, I did that spell check thing and it uh, cut my cut my word off before I got to put it in. Okay, discipline, the practice of training people to obey rules or a code of behavior using punishment to correct disobedience. Branch of knowledge, typically one study in higher education. Hmm. That's actually an interesting definition. That's basically... That's disciplining someone so that's actually let's look up a discipline this is the uh webster a control gained by enforcing obedience self-control the training that corrects molds perfections or the mental facilities and moral character a ruler system of rules governing to train or develop by instruction and exercise, especially in self-control. So I like the self-control definition of discipline, but still again, why, why are you doing it? That still makes me think about motivation. Like why I mean, are you lifting just to see if you can make yourself lift every day? Like there has to be, there's, there's a, you would need a reason to be disciplined. And if you need a reason to be disciplined, isn't that motivation? Motivation. The reason or reasons one has for acting or behaving in a particular way. <laughs> okay. So basically... I was pretty right on with my thinking of discipline and motivation and you, you're disciplined because of you have motivation. You have a reason to do it. So then when people in terms of fitness and stuff, when people say, well, I'm not motivated, that tells me they don't have a goal. Cause if you had a goal, that is your motivation. 
Interesting. This is very interesting. So <clears throat> again, I'm, I'm trying to wrap this up and I think maybe I just did. If you tell me you need, you need motivation or you don't have motivation, then you need a goal. And if you're having a hard time getting yourself to achieve that goal, you don't have discipline. You don't have the self. The self. Uh, now I can't even remember that word. Um, the self. <clears throat> the self power to to draw to get to that goal. And if you don't have that, then again, you need to refer back to your goal to motivate you to do to self discipline to do that. So it's kind of like a, a infinity loop. And they're torn together. And maybe like as we're going through on the different waves, the days that I go, I'm not motivated to do this. Okay, well, then I need to look at my discipline, my self-control to do what I need to do. But why am I doing that? Okay, then I'm going back to my goal. So you have the goal is having that goal, believing you can do that goal. I think if you believe you can do the goal, that's going to help this whole situation. I think when people say they don't have motivation to do the goal, I wonder if a lot of times it's it's because they don't believe they can do it and they're almost kind of self-sabotaging. Where if you truly believe that you can get it and you understand what you have to do to get there, then you'll do that. Otherwise, the goal that you set isn't really a good goal for you, and that's where you need to readjust that goal. This is an interesting topic. But I have kind of always wondered when people go, I'm not motivated, I, then you don't really want it. Which goes back to the, the self-control to do what you need to do. And I'm not motivated. Well, then you have, if you're not motivated, you don't have a goal that you believe in or a goal that you want. So it's not that you don't have motivation. You just don't want the goal. Yeah. So I hope that this podcast shows kind of the thought process that I have. And this, honestly, this is the, when I was, when I was coming up in powerlifting, became one of the top power lifters of my time. These are the kind of things I went through every day. And I still go through every day today with how am I going to grow this podcast? And the days when I go, oh, man, I'm, hardly any people listen to my podcast. I don't want to do the podcast today. I go, well, wait a minute. What's your goal? You said, you said this was your goal. Do you want to achieve that goal? Is you not doing it today? going to get you closer to it or further from it. You need to be doing what's going to get you closer to it. And I'll, and I'll go through these conversations. And when I struggle with them, sometimes that's when these weird ideas pop into my head and make me delve even deeper into it. I actually don't know why this popped into my head today. I think it's because I get sick of hearing people going, well, I'm not motivated. I wish I had motivation like you. No, you don't. You do have motivation like me. We're all humans. We all have motivation. We all have self-control. The question is, do you want to train yours and make it better? And do you want to find goals that you actually believe you can do and goals that you believe that are not, not that you believe, but that you really want? Do you want those goals? If you do, then motivation isn't going to be a problem. We're going to have all, we're all going to have ups and downs. But the days that you're not like, oh, God, I get to go lift, you're going to go, ah, yeah, but I got discipline. I got self-control. And this is what I need to do to continue my progress towards that goal. So that's what I'm going to do. So I think in the end, yeah, okay, I'm trying to wrap this together. All right, in the end, if you claim that you don't have motivation or discipline towards your goal, you don't want the goal. Or you don't believe that you can get the goal. So I would recommend back the goal down a little bit. Make it just a little bit easier to reach for now. 
And if you still can't obtain that, then you don't, you don't really want it. It's not that you don't have motivation. It's not that you don't have self-control. It's that you don't want it. And at that point, I would go, just be honest with yourself. Just admit that you don't want it. And then maybe, maybe, hopefully you can find something else that you do want. All right, guys. Please like this video. Please share this video. Please comment on it. Actually, I would be interested to know what you guys think of, of this particular podcast. Because this was, I know I said I go off the cuff. This was literally the whole idea popped in my head probably like 35, 40 minutes ago. Uh, but I'd be interested to know what what you think of it. If you want to hear more of me rambling in such a manner, I actually like talking about this stuff. And even as I'm talking with you, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm I'm rethinking and trying to set up and like questioning my own theories um, and testing myself, trying to expand my intelligence as I as the podcast went on and trying to figure it out, which which is kind of fun for me. Check out couragebarbell.com, pick up some apparel, go to Chad Ikes on Instagram, and until next time, I'm out of here. Thanks for listening to the Courage Barbell Unlimited Podcast. For more information, please visit couragebarbell.com. Until next time.